Hey guys, Logan here, great to see you, welcome to another video. We've got the patch notes for the first February update, and I say the first one because we got two in January, and I wanted to tell you all about the most relevant changes to the game. The update is set to release tomorrow, February 12th, but it's not certain yet. The note says release tomorrow, but I have some sources that tell me there might be a delay for a couple of days. We'll have to wait and see for that. But let's get going with these notes. Okay, let's start with the improvements to the netcode and the TTK, this time to ensure consistency between TTK and TTD, that's the time to kill and the time to death, regardless of the network performance issues like high latency, jitter, packet loss, etc. And here's a nice change, a change for the issue where players health would wrongly update due to the incorrect high frequency prioritization. This would commonly happen if you were a lot of players in the area. This issue could present itself when, for example, players tried to heal themselves, but no health was applied when the health pouch was used. I've noticed this issue a lot lately and it's nice to have it fixed. Some improvements to the HUD health updates when taking damage, making it easy for you to quicker know where the damage come from. Okay, let's get over to gadgets and weapons. The spawn beacon are getting a lot of changes. Now it should be smoother to put down a beacon on surfaces and you can no longer place it underwater. The recon decoy can no longer be stacked on each other. These have been used to get to places where you normally couldn't get like on a hill uh, where people just sniped you out. This cannot be done anymore and I have actually never used this decoy and I didn't know this was a thing. I would laugh my ass off if I all of a sudden saw a tower of decoys reaching for the sky, maybe knocking down an airplane. That would be so funny to see but no, you can't stack them on each other anymore. And a fix, a really nice fix for the reinforcement bug which caused half the screen to turn black when you try to aim it. This should be fixed now, so a nice fix for when you wanna call in a V1 or a JV2. The half the screen will not turn black, it, you should be able to aim it right away. And as I said in my previous video, they now have a fix for the ammo and health crates that sometimes fell through the floor. This should not happen anymore after this patch. And we have some weapon changes. The shotgun slugs have seen an increased 2 hit kill range to 30 meters, it used to be 25, so 5 meters longer, and increased 1 headshot kill range to 50 meters, used to be 35, when using the solid slug specialization. The Piat is getting a faster reload time. I don't know if this is really a thing that we need, but the reload time were longer than the animation made it look like. So the Piat got a faster reload time after this patch. And the famous KE-7, the support weapon, are getting a nerf, increased in recoil, both vertical and horizontal, and the spread pattern have changed. The KE-7 were too easy to control with that kind of rate of fire. The Turner SMLE now have a reduced damage to 40, when it used to be 45, and the same for the M1944, reduced damage to 40, and the range at which one head and one body shot is lethal to 30 meters, it used to be 35. One of my favorite weapons for the medic, the ZK383, are having an increased recoil when using the light bolt spec. The weapon were too accurate when increased rate of fire. And the feature and spec you can use, the bayonet, have changed to work more like in Battlefield 1 with a higher sprint speed. I never equipped the bayonet in this game, I didn't like it in Battlefield 1, but yes, now it works like in Battlefield 1, so that's, I don't know, that's kind of a good thing, I, I think. And a lot of small fixes are being made on the maps, and I will not bring up all of them, but the fixes are for example not to get stuck in different places on maps or floating stationary weapons, that, those kind of fixes. And as always, multiple crash fixes and stability improvements, that's always good. Uh, but I will leave the link to the patch notes down below if you want to check all the smaller fixes. My feeling about this patch is it's like it's very needed. Uh, a lot of smaller fixes that many players are leaving feedback on. That's good. They, they listen to the community. No major changes, no, no big changes, but a lot of smaller, much needed ones. That's a huge step in the right direction in my book. But that's all for this video. I leave the link to the patch notes if you'd like to read them yourself. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe, click the notification bell, leave a like and don't forget to leave your comment down below. I hope to see you all in my next video. This is Logan, signing out.